Should you ever venture into the hungry deep, steal your heart and still your hands, for creatures seek your soul to reap and gouge in sunken sands. Falter not and swim just true, for light will guide your way. But if you find not one, but two, close your eyes and pray. What is the difference between fear and dread? Fear is the dragon in front of you, the beating heart, the shaking legs, the trembling hands. But dread, dread is the moment of recognition, of realization that the bean from your nightmares, the very organism from your songs, is torn into reality and it sees you. Dread, dread is the prayer. And where else but the dark deep does this feeling thrive? The black unknown, the treacherous terrors of the land even the sun does not reach. The deep is a land of dread. And so I ask you brave souls to once again join me as we embark on a journey into dread. And I personally acquaint you with the most titanic, nightmarish abomination of the deep. Imagine for a moment peace. You stare off into the waves, content. The town celebrates around you. It's the village's 60th anniversary and they've pulled out all the stops. A beautiful party on the beach. Magic fireworks fly overhead. As you stare out towards the coast, there is something in the water. Your eyes go wide. It was like a foreign memory rooted itself into your brain. You grab your head and turn to, what, what, what's that? Everyone's whispering and somebody else. You squint your eyes to get a closer look and there it lies, a dead giant. You look up as the lady of the town stands on the giant's head, she smiles. The heavens have blessed us this day, she says as she regards you all. With this, our village will become the most popular land in all the realm, and we shall be wreathed in glory. The town cheers around you, and you smile. But how did you know that it would be here? That memory, some kind of foresight? A vision, you think? Well, there's nothing you can do about it for now. And that night, you sleep like a log. The next day, Men and women gather around the giant's leg, watching it with awe. Elsa, your baker, walks up to you with a smile. Amazing, isn't it? She asks. You nod. It's beautiful. We're lucky to see it. She smiles and turns away. Oh, I'll drop off your bread later today, she says. Just wanted to take one last look at the ring. What? He turned to her. Elsa. She stops. The what? The ring. The ring that washed up on shore. What? El Elsa, that's a giant, not a ring. No, she says. It's clearly a great big ring with a green gemstone. You walk up to the giant's leg and grab its pinky. What is it I'm holding then? The ring band? She looks at you strangely. Maria, are you, are you well? Maybe rest a bit. You've been working hard. You stare at her. Ah, I see. <laughs> that's funny. You finally laugh. She frowns and then turns away. Some night later, you watch the giant from your balcony, stunning as always, in a morbid way. After all, what could have died to leave behind a remnant so majestic? Oi! You turn to see your butcher, who smiles at you from below and looks up at your balcony. Eli! You shout. You best stop wasting time and propose to Elsa already. She's so mad for marriage that she's seeing things in the mist. Eli laughs. Soon, soon, he replies. I'm off to see that great big whale, of course. He walks off, and you nod to yourself. All right, this, this is strange. That night, you head for the town archive and fling open the doors. The usual clerk is absent, and so you barge into the lower library and start flinging books off their shelves. Shifting fish, changing creature, giant from the water. You rush through pages and pages of texts from adventurers who claim to have discovered something similar, but they're all liars and cowards. And it's never quite right. Nothing quite right. You look through more texts. 
the mirror whale, the dreadfin, the silver wing. No, 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 you stop and turn to see the book you've just thrown to the ground. It's barren, save for two things. The title, which reads, There is something in the water. And the author, Maria Vassell, yourself. The next day, the village gathers around the giant leg, ring, fish, whatever it is. And the town lady smiles as she stands on it. Today, she shouts, we start carving. The townspeople cheer, but you clear your throat and rise to your feet. They all turn awkwardly to meet your eyes. I think we should reconsider touching this thing. The town lady frowns. Maria, you, you can't be serious. I am, you reply. You point to a man nearby. Christoph, when you look at this thing, what do you see? A giant star, he says. Elsa, what of you? A great big ring, she replies. Is that not strange for each of us to see different things when we look? You gaze around at them, expecting shock. We know, the town lady says. It shows everyone something they'd want to see. Surely it's descended from the heavens. You stop. Are you mad? This is no gift. Something is doing this. I found a peculiar book in the archive. You take it out. A book written by myself, which I never wrote. There is but one page, which reads, there is something in the water. This past week since this creature's come. Something's been off. Don't you all see that? Are you all right, Maria? The giant crown is only washed on shore today. Your heart drops. Today. Today. It's been four days. You turn to your fellow town members, who all look at you like you're insane. Maria, they all murmur. The toad came today. The figurine came today. The rock came today. A fear starts to settle into your belly as you turn to the water. Still calm, still tranquil, peaceful. But there is something there. You're sure of it. Your mind turns. What is happening? What sort of creature is doing this? You recall that moment a few days ago when it felt like a memory was forced into your head. When? When did you remember? You look at the townspeople who all look at you like you're a mad woman and you run off into the distance toward the water. Night now and you've gathered everything you could need. A heat-enhanced suit for the cold and a plant that the herbalist gave you that should help you breathe underwater for a couple of hours. You also pack a sword, but pray that you won't need it. Enough, you think, as you turn to the ocean. Now is the time for action. Look back at the town. If they won't see reason, then you'll drag whatever it is that's doing this back to the shore and have them see for themselves. You don't know how long this has gone, but either way, this ends today. The deep is a hollow, ancient void. Your mind races as you swim through the depths. Breathing, thanks to the gillweed, you expected to see some sea life, schools of fish and plants, but there is nothing except for a young walrus who swims away as you approach. You descend from a people of the sea, and it's always been a part of your life. But you never knew it could be so dark and so lonely. You recite the poem taught to your village as children. Should you ever venture into the hungry deep, steal your heart and still your hands. Your heart starts to beat as your hands start shaking. For creatures seek your soul to reap and gouge in sunken sands. Your eyes dart around, watchful for every shadow. Falter not and swim, just true. For light will guide your way. But if you find not one in the corner of your eye, you see a light in the distance and swim toward it. And as you get closer, it's like the fog that covered your eyes your entire life evaporates. And where once you could only see darkness and the hollow world of the depths, you see light, beautiful light coming from beaming towers and looming castles, transcendent archways and grandiose fortresses. It's a city, an emerald city in the depths. You gaze at it in wonder and float toward it. What a beautiful place, you think. How amazing it would be to live here, to have a family here, 
To stay here forever, you float even closer. But as you take in the stellar city of the dark, a patch in the corner of your mind shoots alarm. On the shore, there exists a creature that can change when a different person looks at it. If that's true, then what if? Then maybe, then the city vanishes. And in front of you, lie two glowing eyes that belong to a colossal serpent the length of the world, with fangs the height of city walls and scales like mountains. Your mind physically cannot comprehend its sheer mass, as if your brain rejects the idea that a creature of this size can exist. It regards you. It sees you. And your mind vibrates as if about to implode. You almost laugh as the madness descends upon you. How foolish to think that you had any chance at escape or to kill this creature. The moment the creature's puppet appeared on shore, however many years ago that was, you were all stripped of life. It's toying with you, and it has been for a long time now. You laugh. The ring, the eye, the fish, the city. It is beyond you. An elder god. It looks down at you and shows its teeth in a cheeky grin. There have been moments in your short life Lonely nights when you wondered if the darkness could smile back at you, or if it's simply your imagination playing its tricks. But now, you realize that it can. How many times, you wonder, have you come here and tried to kill it, and it sends you back, and gives you memories to help you try and escape the loop, all to see if you could. It's all entertainment. The light shines from the creature's eyes, and before it all goes dark, a memory pierces into your mind, sharp and foreign. There is something in the water. If you didn't already know, I recently started a Patreon. So please check it out if you'd like to check out my scripts or support the channel in any way because that would help me to post more often and longer videos. Also, join the Discord. We have fun there. That my friends, was SCP-3000. As always, I do take creative liberties for the story. However, the SCP Foundation is a secret organization that is responsible for capturing, containing, and studying various paranormal, supernatural, and other mysterious phenomena. SCP-3000 is said to be able to break down the consciousness which in itself causes subjects to undergo panic attacks and even change their memories.